All right. Hey guys, welcome back. Hopefully everything's going to work this time. I've been having some technical difficulties with the screen recording app. So I understand your frustrations when you go through uh, struggles, turning things in, all that kind of stuff. I get it can be annoying. Uh, but the good news is the coding is feeling pretty good. I'm actually having a good time. Don't worry. We're going to build this back up. I'm actually having a good time doing this stuff now. I'm not like, you know, cursing as much, not as frustrated. It's feeling a little bit easier. So my skills are coming back. Hopefully you guys are kind of getting the hang of it too. We shall see. Uh, this program, we're keeping it pretty simple here with the one player game for level two. Uh, basically what you're doing is you're just adding in a feature that generates a random number for, so that somebody can try and guess it, right? So you're going to just ask the user how many digits to make the correct answer. So here's the thing. Uh, <clears throat> now this right here is a built-in random integer generator, right? But the problem is like you could specify a number between one and 10, it would be really easy to guess, or you could specify a number between one and a uh, hundred million, and it would be pretty hard to guess, right? It, uh, not so hard if you have a, you know, something that tells you whether you're too high or too low. Um, we could go into a whole conversation about, you know, how many guesses it should take, all that stuff. That would be interesting. But anyways, the point is um, <clears throat> you can, you don't have control as a user over how hard the number is going to be to guess, how long the number is. So we're going to use this random number generator, but we're going to make it a little bit more complex to uh, be able to generate something more interesting. Um, well, not more interesting, to allow the user to control how long the number is, right? So basically, you want to be able to enter the number of digits that your number, that the number you're trying to guess is going to be, right? So you're going to type in something in this box, like for instance, three, and then you will get, if we type in three, you'll get a number in the hundreds, say 941 or 842, whatever it is, okay? Let's say we want a four digit number. Here's how the computer is gonna build it. It's gonna take a random number between zero and nine, then it's gonna take another random number between zero and nine, then it's gonna take another random number and another random number till it builds your uh, exact thing that you're trying to guess, right? So <clears throat> here's what we're gonna do to make that a reality. We're gonna need a, bu a button to enter the number of digits and we're gonna need a uh, text box to enter the number of digits into. Then we'll go over to blocks. And it's pretty awesome because we're actually going to use a while loop right here, uh, which is pretty similar in structure to an if statement. Basically a while, an if statement has a, a test here and you do something and you, or you test if something is true. And if it is true, then you do something, right? But that just happens once. A while loop, you test to see if something's true. If it's true, then you do something and then you retest and you do it again and you repeat it and you repeat it until this test condition is no longer true. That's how a while loop works. So we're going to use that and we're going to set up a couple of variables. Now, the cool thing is here, we actually get to use local variables and it works pretty good. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to use our local variables with this while loop so the the variables will only work in the while loop but that's fine because that's the only place we actually need them so it's it's it works out kind of great uh we're gonna have two variables actually one of them we're gonna call count and that's what we're gonna use to keep track of how many trips through the while loop we've done so we can make sure that you know whatever number is there we do and we do it accurately and then we're going to have another number uh what, what what should we call this variable now i can't remember oh we want to know how many uh number of digits right we don't want to know how many digits number of digits i'm going to abbreviate a little bit okay so we want to initialize the count our starting point to zero because we haven't added any digits yet right then number of digits we're going to initialize that to uh, number of digits right here. Uh, so that would be, let's go with uh, dot text. So enter number of digits variable there to enter number of digits from the text box. Okay, now our condition is pretty interesting. Uh, we're actually going to use a comparison operator. So we're gonna compare two things. We're gonna compare the count to the number of digits, right? So we're gonna need both of our variables here we're going to do that. Let's copy it, paste it again, put them in place, put them in place. 
and we actually want to see if one is bigger or smaller. We want to see if the count is less than the number of digits. Okay, so if the count is less than the number of digits, we want to get a new digit and then try it again, right? So we start with zero, we have zero digits, then we're going to put in uh, a digit, let's say a four, right? Then we're going to check, oh, nope, we want we want a, a six digit number, okay, put in a number or number, okay, put in another number, right? We're going to do that six times till we have our six digit number. Okay, so what do we want to actually do? Okay, now we want to grab this global number variable. And we want to just start adding on to it, right? It starts out as being blank, and then we just add on to it as we go. So we're going to actually set, we're going to change number to, let's see, number of digits, number right here. We're going to set that to, and then we're going to join together whatever number already is. So whatever number already is plus uh, a some type of random digit between one and nine. Now I'm not sure if between zero and nine will work. I'm gonna live dangerously and just see what happens. I think you're probably better off going with one to nine. Um, I think if it starts with a zero, you might have a hard time guessing that, but I'm not sure. Anyways, um, okay. So there we go from one from zero to nine or you can make it one to nine, either one should work nine times out of 10. And then the last thing we have to do is we have to keep track of our count. So we're just gonna add one to the count oops, every time we go through the variables. So we're gonna set our count variable. We're just going to add one to it. We're gonna add one, here's our one. We're going to add one to uh, the count. Let's see. Let's copy that. Right. So first we add a number to our global. We add a digit to our global number. Then we add one to our count to keep track. Right. So as we go through this loop enough times, eventually the count will grow larger than the number of digits or will grow equal to it. And the loop will stop. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to happen. So let's let's test this thing out let's see what happens um <clears throat> let's go ahead oh look it's already booted up from the last one i think let's see if it just let's just go for it so i'm gonna just guess a one digit number enter number of digits all right so i don't know what it is but i'm gonna just try one okay done no guess didn't work okay two guess didn't work try again three guess didn't work four guess didn't work. Okay. Uh, rather than just test everything, I'm going to actually use a little computer science trick here. And I'm just going to co-opt one of my labels. Now, hopefully these labels on yours tell you whether it's too high or too low or whether the guess is right or wrong, something like that. But I'm just going to co-opt it for a sec. And I'm going to put it in here. And I'm going to just check to see... Uh, what my my number actually is. So <clears throat> how should we do that? We should probably right here at the end, let's just set our our label right here, higher or lower label. I know I'm probably a bit lazy of me to not just create a new label, but you know, why not? Two, and then we'll gra grab our global, our global variable here, our global number variable global number. Perfect. Okay. Now, uh, this is basically cheating because we're just going to see what it is and we'll be able to test it really fast, but it'll be nice. Um, so that will be good. So let's see. Hey, now we can make it a little bit harder. Let's do a three digit number and a number of digits. Now it's not giving me a label. Hmm. I think, oh my gosh, this thing is killing me. I think, hmm. wow. Uh, wow, wow, wow. So frustrating. I paid for the, uh, I pay, paid for the whole version. I don't know what's going on. The problem is we need to initialize this on the click. So just throw the click in there and you'll have it. Uh, we're, we're going to be out of time here soon. So 
There you go. I'm going to have to end the video. If you want, you can 